Getting set for Tiger Wrestling tonight. A chance to talk pre-match with Coach Brandon Pigorsch. Coach, as always, we appreciate the time. You guys have a duel tonight against the Abilene Cowboys. I guess before we look at tonight's matchup, let's take a little look back to Baldwin this past weekend for you guys. A uh, couple of individual champions. Let's start there. Yeah, um, wrestled at Baldwin over the weekend. Um, 16 team tournament, uh, double elimination, and had uh, they won 3 2 1 A school in Goodland and the rest of the schools in the field were four A, so it was nice to to see a lot of the competition that we're going to be seeing here in the postseason. I'm at Baldwin, and it was it was a good tournament. The kids wrestled well. Um, had had a couple kids win some of their first varsity matches in their high school career, so that was a positive thing. And we had some kids who had kind of <clears throat> hit a little bit of a losing streak lately. Uh, were able to get a couple wins apiece. Um, for themselves and kind of get their confidence back. So overall, it was a good weekend. You know, I had two two champions. Um, Rhett Coppice uh, won the 106 pound class. I'm going four and zero on the day. Uh, beat the kid that's ranked number six in the state in four A from Basie Linwood in the finals. Um, and Gavin Ware uh, continued to to keep his his winning ways going and was able to win the tournament. I uh, had a good finals match with a kid from Tongan Oxie. Um, to the ranked third, right behind him in Class 4A, and uh, was able to win four to three. So it was a good match for him, a good test, and we saw some kids uh, on the team come out and do some great things this weekend. Keegan uh, McDonald was able to pick up some his first varsity wins, and then we were also uh, because of the format of the tournament, I was also able to get some of my junior varsity guys into the varsity tournament and um, had some kids do well there. Clayton Strecker was able to pick up his first varsity win, so. That was a good weekend for the kids. Yeah, good deal. Uh, and, and a lot of guys getting to wrestle, which is always good, and, and double elimination. It kind of starts you toward that postseason, which hard to believe. Here it is February, two weeks from tomorrow, is regional competition. Uh, we always say it goes by quick, and then it happens, and you can't believe how quickly it does take place. Let's talk about tonight's uh, duel for you guys, Abilene Cowboys. Strong again this year. They've been state-ranked. You guys have as well. Uh, both teams have state-ranked wrestlers. I guess let's start with the fact that uh, you guys will be a little bit short-handed tonight. Yeah, um, through, the, through the competition over the weekend, a couple kids got banged up. Um, so we'll have a couple kids that won't be in the lineup that normally are tonight. Uh, Rhett Coppice at 106 won't be in there. Um, and then Logan McDonald at heavyweight won't be wrestling. So uh, having those two guys out, you know, is definitely... Uh, leaves us a little shorthanded, but we do have a sub at 106 for Rhett. Um, and, we'll, you know, we'll just go out there and battle the best that we can. Yeah, absolutely, and always a great rivalry between these two schools. We know that. I wanted to look ahead as well to the weekend. We, we mentioned two weeks from tomorrow, regionals are here. Uh, you get another two-day tournament uh, coming up this Friday and Saturday to help prep for that big two-day tournament uh, at the end of February. Yeah, we were able to get uh, Rose Hill a two-day tournament on our schedule this weekend. School, a four-day school down by Wichita. Um, and it hosts a, a good number of, of classes, though, of classifications throughout the state. Um, you see small schools up to class 6A schools there. Um, so a two-day tournament format, uh, we like that just as a preparation for, for regional and state. Um, but we're going to see some great competition. I, I feel that this will probably be the most competitive and toughest tournament um, of the season for us this weekend, and so uh, we're looking forward to it. Um, number one team out of 6A Derby is there, as well as uh, countless numbers of, of ranked 4A and 5A schools. So, um, you know, we're kind of seeing where we can get the stack up also, you know, just getting some good experience. The kids get to get to kind of get what it's like to go to an overnight deal, um, kind of stay overnight. Um, just good wrestling experience for these kids. Um, for later on in life, because that's you know what college athletics is about. You go on these trips and stuff, and so it's just a good, good life uh, trip for them as well as not just a wrestling trip. So we're looking forward to it, seeing the kids grow over the weekend, and, and I think we can go down there and, and we'll have some kids do really well. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it sounds great. Uh, that's it's a big three days coming up tonight, and then uh, Friday and Saturday at at Rose Hill. Coach, we always appreciate the time. Uh, looking forward to seeing the guys out on the mat tonight. Let's go get them. All right, thanks, Rocky. Live action on the way for Clayseter Tiger Wrestling here in Abilene. When budgets are tight and price matters, you can depend on the selection of private labels at Ray's Apple Market to fill your grocery list. 
best choice and always safe products offer customers an inexpensive alternative to national brands. But that doesn't mean they skimp on quality. Private labels are very comparable to the major brands in quality, quantity, and value. Ray's Apple Market is proud to stock a variety of private brand items throughout the store, giving you more ways to save money. As a third-generation seed company, Oldie Seed has pioneered the development of soil-specific hybrids that thrive in your soils. Our Know-to-Grow research program is the largest in the Midwest and utilizes advanced technologies including Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link soybeans. Oldie's research program delivers top yields while helping you win the war on resistant weeds. This season, don't settle for anything less than a soil-specific seed from Oldie Seed. A message from Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement in Concordia. Is your home properly insulated to keep the cold outside and keep your energy bills affordable? Geisler Roofing offers several insulation solutions, including spray foam, rolled, and blown-in insulation. Learn more at GeislerRoofing.com. This is Dallas Hasselbank, and Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement has you covered with more than 37 years' experience. Geisler Roofing and Home Improvement, we've got you covered. Are you ready for the madness taking over in March? Be sure your internet connection has the speed you need to stream all your games. Twin Valley Pulse offers super fast internet plans with gig or 100 megabits per second download speeds. Sign up now and score free installation from their team. Pulse Internet is a game changer. Visit Twin Valley in Miltonville or Clay Center or call 800-515-3311 to get you up to speed. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact them for details. And a good evening from Abilene, Kansas. Rocky Dowling alongside our studio engineer, Bernie Pansell. And we welcome to the mic Eric Alquist tonight, who, of course, is a former Tiger wrestler with the uh, Clay County Kids Wrestling Club, the director, and uh, along with his coach, along with uh, Brandon Vistemeyer. Eric, really appreciate you stepping in. Benny Wallace, normally with us on the air, had some things come up that he just had commitments he couldn't get out of, so uh, willingly you step in to help us cover uh, Tiger Wrestling. Thank, thank you very much for inviting me tonight. Absolutely. Of course, uh, you've got a vested interest uh, with wrestling in general, with the wrestling club. You have a freshman out there you might have some interest too in the middle weight too, right? <laughs> yes, he's uh, he's uh, taken some months this year, but uh, he's a freshman. He's, he's gaining a lot of experience. Absolutely. He's been off with uh, Eric's son, who will be wrestling tonight. We'll give you the lineup here in just a moment. The captains are meeting right now. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back and get you set for the opening of our play center at Abilene Wrestling Duel in the NCKL. We'll be back in just a moment. You got to make money to spend money. Some people like to save it or invest it. If you're one of those people, come see us about setting up accounts for all you want to do with your money. I'm Alicia Linhart with Union State Bank. Our hours and convenient ATMs, internet and mobile banking are available to serve you better. We are open until 5.30 on Thursdays at the main bank on the square under the time and temperature sign. Union State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. When it's freezing outside, but you still need to get your medications, Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy makes it easy for you with their drive through apothecary. Located right by the hospital in Clay Center, there's no need to get out of your car any more than you have to. Just swing by Patterson's Apothecary to get your prescription filled, then you're on your way. Professional service, friendly faces, and a convenient location. Patterson Health Mart Pharmacy is looking out for you and your health. We do bring you back once again to Abilene. Let's look at your lineup for tonight. First off at 106 pounds, unfortunately, Red Toppis, third ranked right in the state area. He is out injured last week at Baldwin, right? Yes, he was injured in the championship match. He did win the championship, but uh, injured and will be out for a while and flipped this weekend against Rose Hill. So at 106, right in Shoemaker goes to the Tigers, a freshman against that other freshman or a junior, Gus Haug, and we are underway as the Tigers take uh, the center mat here. Good crowd on hand. It was their senior night recognition for many of the activities in Abilene School District. Haug is uh, broken down Shoemaker to the mat right now and trying to work his way around. If he does get behind him, he'll have a take. Now he goes into a cradle, and now Shoemaker gets out of it and no points awarded either way. Good scramble by Brighton that time. Shoemaker backing up right now as Hal comes at him. Now Shoemaker back to the center. Shoemaker, 9-15 and 15 on the season against uh, Gus Howe, junior for the Abilene Cowboys. 
So Shoemaker, a little trouble early, was able to get out of it. Now both on their feet, a little head slap by Haug, and now he goes into a hammer lock and now takes him to the head and arm and right to his back. Shoemaker fighting to stay away from getting pinned right now with a minute seven to work in this first period at 106. In normally Rick Coppice's weight class, but he is out with a knee injury. Stretching out his Haug, keeping his shoulder off the mat. Shoemaker trying to fight it off right now. Bowling up. Now, Al tries to reestablish the hold. He does get him a little further to the mat. Shoemaker doing all he can to stay away from the pin. The official taking a really close look. And then they win by Paul Graveling in the opening match of the night. And uh, right in a good scramble early, Eric. And then he just got caught. That's right. So, Shoemaker a loss by Paul for the Tigers in the opening match of the night. Colton Barner will go over the Tigers at 113, another freshman for the Tigers. He takes on number two ranked team in the state right now in uh, Will Stroda. There is number two ranked in 4A, and he's a very strong rep. He's a good one in the field. He was last year as a freshman, back now as a sophomore and number two ranked, and so obviously Barner will have his hands full, three and six a freshman. There's a deep single leg in by Stroda, a lift and a takedown, and he leads 2 nothing, and now goes right to work. Almost uh, went to like a kill. Now he's got him locked up into his back. Strodo with uh, a pin for Abilene and two very early sticks for the Abilene Cowboys. And no surprise, Will Strodo. That's a tough pass for Barner. What Coach Sigorge is hoping is that Barner learns something from going out against a guy like that. That's all you can hope for in a, in a match like that is you learn. Parker Tholstrip is up next. This is a third freshman. He's talking about a young team hit the mat and getting some experience. But Tholstrip, 18 and 6 on the season. He's had some success this year. He has had a lot of success. Chevy Fonz is his opponent, a senior for the Abilene Cowboys here at 120 pounds. We're back underway. Front headlock by Tholstrip. Now working around and trying to get the outside leg. Now works in behind and has a quick two point takedown. Tight waist on and now stretches out Fonz. Bars that arm, trying to walk around the outside. He has he has a chicken wing right now. And now leans back, trying to get maybe some tilt points with that chicken wing, unable to get it, but still has the chicken wing in position. And now he's let that go and goes down to keep control of the wrist. Heavy, though, on the top right now is Holstrip with a 2 nothing lead. And trying to break down his opponent, Chevy Ponce, senior. Now, right on the edge, Hans trying to get outside the circle and does. They'll stop it with a minute 14 to go first period, and they'll head back to center. So, a good start here for Parker Tholster. Right back to the center they go. They'll be on the top position with the 2 0 lead after the early takedown. And now back underway. Gets the ankle pick, stretches him out. Again, very heavy. The knee in the hole now works to the outside right. Now lifts and. He's trying to go back to his wing right now. Loses the arm, but still has a tight waist in position and very heavy on the head. Now gets him almost turned over to a tilt. Got a couple of flags. He'll actually get two back points out of that. 48 to work, and they go outside the ring again. It's a 4 nothing lead for Parker. The full strip off to a good start against the senior for Abilene, Ponce. Tiger freshman, 18-6 and six on the season at 120 pounds. The full strip. A 4 nothing lead with 49 seconds to work first period. They're back underway. The chicken wing is working it again. Now loses it, but still works in behind. Keeping the tight waist in. And now right back and heavy on the hips again. Working for some hand control or wrist control underneath. 30 seconds to work first period. Tholstrip leads it near 4-0. He's going to have him there. It's pretty deep, it looks like. Maybe a little bit high as he works back in behind and gives up the half. 16 to work. 4 nothing start for Tholstrup. Tigers lost their first two matches by fall. Tholstrup against the senior Chevy Ponce. Trying, trying for a stack there. He had a couple of tilt points earlier. Tried to stack. Didn't get anything out of it. But he does go to the second period with a 4 nothing lead and a good start, Coach. That's a very, very good start for Parker. Rocky Downing along with our studio engineer, Bernie Pensella. Eric Alquist with us tonight. 
as the Tigers here in Abilene taking on the state-ranked Cowboys. Tigers have been state-ranked all and off through the year. They started in the top ten. Right now, Abilene's number six as a team. Tolster starts in the down position to begin the second period. He leaves it four nothing. Now to his feet, trying to break the hands. And back down to the mat they go as he rolls through and still working from underneath. Now trying to work the hands free before he gets to his feet. Ponce in pretty good position right now in behind. Again, Tolster does lead it towards zero. Tigers down 12 nothing as a team as Abilene had two pins to begin. Right on the edge, and they'll whistle it to a stop of the minute 24 to go second period. Back to center they go. So Fonts able to control thus far in the first 36 seconds of the second period, riding on top, but he hasn't done much with that ride. No, he really hasn't. In fact, Folster got to his feet once, tried to break the hands, just couldn't get away. Now, quick start. And Parker is to his feet, lifted up and broken back down to the mat by Fonts. 4-0, full strip lead with a minute 13 to go second period. Holstrup now sitting out to his feet, but they go out of bounds, kind of pushed out by Ponce as Parker got to his feet. With wrestlers getting some air as they head back to the middle. Minute eight to work second period. Set to go again. Holstrup with the 4-0 lead. I'll get you the JV finals here in just a moment. There were three matches. Holster working from underneath. He started the period up 4 nothing. Still leads it 4-0. Ponce now back on his hips. Trying to keep a hold of the leg as Holster trying to shake him loose. Now Holster gets to his base again. The leg in by Ponce kind of keeping him from getting to his feet. Now he does break him back down flat on his front side. And the 35 to work second period, 4 nothing. Tolster to lead. And now again, trying to get to his feet, does. Pons just in behind, holding on for dear life. And Tolster still trying to break those hands free, and now he does, and leaves it 5-0 with the escape. And now back on his feet, where he's been really good thus far. Got an early takedown, a couple of back points, and tilts. There's a good outside single leg, 7 seconds. And a late point scored on the two-point takedown. He'll lead at 7-0. Now, Coach, Harry Galtwist loves late points scored by your wrestler, doesn't you? Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> of course. And what a great outside single leg. By that Parker. was a beautiful single leg. Got outside, got around him, and then just had the easy takedown with about three seconds remaining, and now leads at 7 nothing. So, full strip up on Chevy Ponce, the senior for Abilene, and it'll be... Choice for Parker, and he'll ride, which he did so well in that first period. He'll be down to 7 nothing lead. Still trying to work that chicken wing in there. It's been his go-to thus far. He got some tilt points out of it earlier. Now he almost gets into his back. He can keep his hips up high. He cannot, but he's still in great position right now. Riding, he does get two near balls and leads at 9-0. So just had enough of the shoulder at an angle to get the uh, near ball points. He almost stuck him to his back. Yes, he did. He, he had a good bridge, though. Ponce, the senior for Abilene from underneath. And now, again, he's almost too far across. Tolster in a little bit of danger right now. He's going to give up a reversal and not give up any more. Ponce in this position with a minute 10 to work. Again, Tolster leads it 9-2. to two. And now he's able to step across. And break the arm, and the reversal right back to Tholstrup, and he leads to 11-2. to two. Under a minute to work third period. Tholstrup trying to stretch him out now. Bob sits out. This may be an opportunity to suck him back on his back. And he is getting some back points again against Ponce. And he may get a little bit more bridging up again as Ponce trying to stay away from a pin. Parker Tholstrup in great position, 30 seconds to work. He leads 11 to 2. He has three near balls coming, but he's wanting to pin right now. 22 seconds. Now he reaches across, has the arm. He can suck a little tighter, maybe. Yep. Lean it's back it's into it. The official looking awfully hard. 10 seconds to work. 
Ball inside to avoid it, and Holstra gets the pin. So a Tiger win by ball for Parker Holstra. He had a little danger moment there, Eric, but again, he rebounded and got the pin. Parker has very good hip movements, and that enabled him to roll right through it. So Parker Holstra, the first varsity win for the Tigers. Now, earlier... Three JV matches took place. Austin Brandt lost by a tech ball to Jackson Randall at 138. At 145, Clayton Strecker lost a 6-5 decision to Trenton Wooknow. Strecker actually led through much of that match. And then at 160, Sean Little had a win by ball over Luke Hager. Now the Tigers are open at 126, and uh, Jimmy Brooks is able to go out and get his hand raised. Also, the Tigers open at 132. Colby Moore comes out for Abilene to get his hand raised, and now we'll get back to it. As Reed Nitter takes the match for the Tigers, the junior at 138. State ranked earlier in the season. He had a really strong year, a little bit of a stretch where he's run into some really tough competition, and he's had another one tonight. Trevor Castile, one of the top ranked wrestlers, number six in the state, but really these are two state ranked wrestlers, if you will, because Reed Nitter's been up in those rankings as well. We are. Underway at 138 pounds, Nittery. Junior, 22-13 and 13 on the season. Just underway in this first period. Both wrestlers fighting for some hand control. Outside single leg by Castile. Fought off by Nitter. They spin themselves out of action. Outside the circle stop with a minute 47 to go opening period. Back underway. Forehead to forehead. Now there's an inside. No fireman shot in there by Castile. And Nitter again spins it off. That was a deep shot. Yes, it very was. And uh, somehow Nitter was able to just kind of get to his feet, bounce him off, and they're right back in a neutral position. Nitter starts down low. Both wrestlers at that same level, and now they come back up again forehead to forehead. There's another shot by Castile, single leg, that Nitter breaks out of. A minute 13 left, first period. This is Nitter getting to the outside of the circle and just outside the ring they go. And Castile in good position right there. Nitter seeing if he's got maybe some blood on the nose. The official taking a look. And we will have a blood timeout. Gives us a chance to a break as well. We'll be back with more from Abilene. Tiger Wrestling continues on 100.9. The Citizens National Bank is ready to provide you with a great borrowing experience, whether you're buying, building, or refinancing a home. We offer first-time home buyer, FHA, VA, and conventional home loans with competitive interest rates on a national level and flexible term options to fit your financial situation. With little money down, we can assist you with getting into your dream house. The Citizens National Bank, mortgage loans with the personal attention you deserve. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, a quick blood timeout. Reed Nitter getting some work on the nose to clean that up and uh, stop that bleeding. He's wrestling against the six-ranked wrestler in the state, Trevor Castile, a senior for Abilene. Nitter, a junior at 138, 22 and 13, coming in to uh, this duel. Of course, the Tigers have a huge weekend, Eric, heading to Rose Hill for the first time tomorrow. Yes, Rose Hill tomorrow. It starts at 11 o'clock. It's a new tournament for Clay Center Tigers. And they will be a two-day tournament, so uh, 24 teams, Eric was telling me earlier, in that uh, tournament. There's another single leg in by Castile. Nitter again able to break out of it. So he hasn't been damaged by the shots taken by Castile, but Trevor Castile has gotten in a few times on Reed. Now Reed trying to duck underneath and wasn't there, backs away from it. 45 seconds left, first period. No score as of yet. Both wrestlers locked up. Again, Nitter trying to go low and Castile blocking that same level. Lots of hand fighting in this match. Absolutely, yeah. You can see both wrestlers trying to get some kind of wrist control. There's another fireman's in by Castile. In deep, Nitter fighting it off, and now Castile sucks it a little tighter, and he'll have to give it the two-point takedown. So Castile has shot several times and finally got the fireman to connect and get the two-point takedown. Now Nitter, though, to his feet quickly as the escape, he trails two to one, and they're back on their feet again. Ten seconds to work first period. A little overhook by Nitter. Now breaks away from that. Tried to take a little shot. Wasn't there. And there's the first period buzzer. Two to one. Nitter trails against Castile here at 138 pounds. We'll get... Uh, 
Eric, to give us a little look into this weekend as well in Clay Center. The Tigers are heading to Rose Hill, but a big weekend in the great greater classic that will be coming up in the invitational for the uh, Clay County Wrestling Club. So we'll look into that here in just a little bit. Aaron Nitter is about to be silted as he started underneath, and Castile has a chicken wing in and scooting Nitter back into the middle of the mat. Now they're on the edge again. Nitter trying to squeeze his way off the circle. Castile has the head right in the mid-back and his chicken wing, and now they will stop it on the whistle, but uh, close to giving up some points right there for Nitter. Back to center they come. Reed trailing 2-1. to one. Castile goes in on top again. And we've got a caution against the Cowboys on the whistle start. And back underway. Reed's got one leg free, and now back to the mat. Now to his feet, turns and tries to hit a switch standing. Castile fights that off and stretches him out on the edge, and fortunately outside the circle because Castile had him turned to his back. A minute 20 to work, second period. Back to center they go. Nitter again working from underneath and down two to one. And back to his feet is Nitter. Trying to break free and an escape in the first period. Now turns and faces, doesn't get the points, but he may get more if he can break the leg free. He's got the head of Castile buried. Castile, though, with the leg still in control. Nitter stepping across and now has the reversal and has the lead at three to two. A nice work by Reed into the junior here in the second period. He has a 3-2 lead. Now on top. Trying to stretch Castile out. He now balls up underneath. Here with trying to reach the half in on the right side. Wasn't there. Now gives that up. Goes back to try to bar the arm out a little bit. Still has a tight waist in. 32 seconds, second period. And now Castile tries to and a Grandy's way through. Yeah, that was a two-step Grandy. And he's got Nitter to his back. Reversal. He leads, and Nitter's going to fight off a pin right now. Castile caught him on that Grandy. 4-3. Castile leading. Nitter fighting off underneath, though, with 10 seconds. Keeping his shoulder off of that right now. Keeping the hip high. Castile really clinching it in. Four seconds, three seconds, trying to fight it off his Reed Nitter. And he will stay away from the pin, but he will trail going into the final two minutes. The better in control the whole period until the final 30 seconds. And uh, Castile hit that two-step grandy, as Eric said, and, and from there was able to get back points and now leads 7-3. to three. Mitter on top to begin the final period. Castile to his feet, trying to break the hands. Mitter is going to let him go. Now Castile turns and goes really quickly with a double leg and a takedown right on the edge, and leads it 9-3. to three. So Nitter, who led 3-2, to two, has seen seven unanswered points scored by Castile with a minute 43 to go in the third period. He's got some work to do. Nitter goes down underneath. Castile, up position to begin. He picks the outside ankle and now leaves it and goes up top to right on Nitter with a minute 35 to work third. Reed trailing 11-3. And again, Castile working on top. Schmitter flattened out right now, just trying to find some space. And now Castile nearing more back points. Schmitter fighting it off, but he has got his arm tied and barred out. He gets one flag. Now he's going to get some back points given Castile will. Nitter tries to roll through, and now Castile cinches it up a little tighter. One minute left in the match, and once, just about like it was in the second period, Nitter fighting off a pin. And he's rolled from one side to the other, and now Castile gets control of both arms, and there's the pin. Reed Nitter will lose by fall. 3-2 lead, Eric, and then all of a sudden... And still just took control of this thing. Yes, he just exploded in the match and reeled off a flurry of points. And then eventually the stick coming there in the third period. Now, Eric, if you just do, it's just calling control right here. And you just turn it all the way to the left until you can't turn it any further, okay? Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> we have Ethan Alquist, Eric's son, on the matter. Freshman's the Tigers at 145, and he's taking on a junior in option with now. 
They should have not met this year or have not met before at all. No, they have not met this year. I mean, 45-pound weight class, Ethan Alquist, 8-11, and 11, a freshman. And both wrestlers really going at it, front headlocked by Ethan. He's got him uh, good pressure down to the mat, melting down. Now he's trying to work around to get a leg. About 30 seconds into the match, he works from one side to the other, still has that front headlock in position. And now Wolf now is able to reach up and grab the leg and turn the sack the other direction. He's going to get a takedown. Ethan fights back points early, but now look now sucking up the arm. He's getting back points with a minute 18 to go in the first. Austin Wolf now is a junior for the Abilene Cowboys. Ethan Alquist, a freshman, and now he's got him in the head and arm. And he is fighting for all he can to stay, keep his right shoulder off the mat. What now? Unable to really push him across. Now he gets a leg three. He's just trying to leg three. But that was it. And there is the pin for the last by ball for Ethan Alquist to Austin Whipnow of the Abilene Cowboys at 145 pounds. So it happens when you're a freshman a lot, doesn't it? You think that's right. And you hope to pay it back later on in your career. That's right. He's going to have a good attitude about understanding that. I know it's frustrating, but it's it is idea. frustrating for all the freshmen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's something they have to work through. And probably when you get up to this class and beyond, higher it's even tougher because you're going against some guys that have some real body mass and muscle. Yeah. Cam Osborne on the mat now for the Tigers, 152 pounds. He's been state ranked this year, 23 and 11. He has a senior, Nick Brooks, his opponent here for Abilene. Both wrestlers uh, ear to ear right now, again fighting for some hand control. Now, a little slap down by Osborne. Cam unable to do much with it there. He's got some underhooks in. Minute 39 to work. Now steps across. Almost took him to his back. He will not get points. Cam had those underhooks in, stepped across, and had a throw and just missed it right on the edge. If he had more room, he might have been able to finish it or at least get the takedown out of it, but they were right on the edge. So back to center they go. A minute 26 to work. Tigers down in the duel, 36 to 6. Cam Osborne here at 152 pounds against Nick Brooks, a senior for Abilene. Cam, a junior. And now they break apart for a moment. Go back forehead to forehead. Minutes in to work, first period. Shot in, outside single leg, a lift. Cam's got a takedown. Osborne leads it to nothing. And now starts to work righting. Reaching for that right arm to break it down with a tight waist, waist into his left arm. And now stretches him out a little bit. Steps across. 42 seconds. Osborne leads it here. 2 nothing. And now trying to slip the half in with that left hand. 30 seconds remains in the first. Cam Osborne leads it. 2-0. Couldn't get the... I can't really tell from here if he's got the half in there or not. He kept tried to slip it in earlier. Now he doesn't. You can see his hand underneath. He's trying to get control of the arm again. Yeah, the feet need to work. Right in that wrist pretty heavy right now. And in great position with the hips in behind. Ten seconds. Steps to the outside. Really, his opponent, Brooks, not doing much underneath, so not exposing anything, and we're going to see the first period of him with Cam Osborne leading 2-0. It'll be Cam's choice for the second period, and he'll take down with that 2 nothing lead. Had a growing year last year, and has had a really solid year this year. Yeah. Cam uh, was state ranked early in the season here at 152. Now we've got a caution on the start. Cam trying to get out of there and get a quick point to begin the second period. He's up 2 nothing. And we're set to go. Gets to his feet right away. Trying to break the hand. Trying to peel him near the edge. Now they walk outside the circle, and they'll stop him with a minute 53 to go second period. Back to center they come. And back on the way. Cam almost hit him a switch. Right on, he does. And he almost takes him to his back. He will get the reversal. And he leaps 4-0. Almost caught him. Now the front headlock still riding, trying to reach back maybe for a straddle. He gives that up. Now Brooks to his feet. Cam steps across and throws him to his back. Can't keep him there, though. And actually, Brooks kind of bounces out of it and in pretty good position. Now Cam able to sprawl back out and keep himself in a good spot. Cam 
Cam is still in, in control. 4 nothing lead with a minute 15 to work second period. Brooks has a leg, but Cam's still in control right now as long as he keeps the head in control, which he does have that front headlock, trying to milk him back down to the mat with a minute three to go second. Now Cam also reaches for a leg, still with that front headlock. Now he works back in behind or tries to. It's blocked. 54 to work second period. Osborne leads it 4-0. And now a stalemate is called right as Cam was about to break the leg free, but uh, may have helped the whistle blue that he broke that leg free. But good stalemate and a good scramble by Cam to not get reversed, which he nearly was. 51 seconds, second period, 4 nothing. Osborne leads it. Cam working on top. And now bars the arm across the back. Still working in good control. 35 to work, second period, 4 nothing. Cam Osborne leads, 152 pounds. Down to 26 seconds. Kind of a hammer lock up top. Now he breaks that. Let's go with that, but still has great control of the arm. He's trying to walk across. Step across. Now he does. He's got him through his back. And Brooks is very limber. He's able to roll through. Now Cam pulls him back to his back, or nearly does. He's going to get two near balls. And Osborne will lead, lead 6-0 now with four seconds and with the buzzer sounding on the second period. So, couple times close to getting him pinned or at least to his back for an extended time and Brooks with some shoulders that evidently can twist a long ways. Yeah, I think he has a very strong neck. There you go, yeah. And he was able to kind of move himself out of the, that position twice, maybe three times in that period alone. Cam will start on top. He leads 6-0. Third period underway. Breaks the arm down. It's wrist control now for a moment. Now gives that up. Although he's got the uh, forearm with the wrist. Now he backs out of it. Still in position, in control on top. Really working a lot of different angles, trying to get himself a chance to turn him over once again. He leads 6-0. Cam Osborne at 152. Now Brooks nearly to his feet. Cam breaks him back to the mat. Osborne up 6-0. Brooks on his face. Not really to his feet. Now he does sprawl for a moment. And now Cam, as he backs, flattened out on the mat. Trying to get a ball and chain now. 6 nothing. Osborne leads. Down to a minute three left to go. Third period. Osborne has ridden most of this match, in fact, after we early takedown. Still working the ball and chain right on the edge. Now trying to get it. She killed points. 45 to work third period. Cam Osborne leads it 6-0 and in great control. They're right on the edge. Brooks trying to scoot his way outside the circle. Cam right back and behind with the hips in position. Laying heavy on Brooks. And Brooks really just on the mat right now with 25 to work. Not much happening. They're going to stop it and bring it back to center. Osborne leads 6 0. And they'll head back to center with Osborne in the up position and a 6 nothing lead, 24 to work. Cam looking for his 24th win on the season. Back they go with 20. And again, Brooks flattened out. Osborne a 6 0 lead. He turned him a few times. Continues to work here, but Brooks not doing much underneath and not really exposing anything for him to take advantage of. And Cam Osborne can just toast in with two and with one and with his 24th win. Cam Osborne, a 6 nothing shutout of Nick Brooks at 152 pounds. Now, not much in doubt on that one, Harry. So no, he was in control for the whole match. From start to finish, he really got up and just kind of kept, kept it coming. At 160 pounds, it'll be Tyson Tips is going for the Tigers against Dakota Lawn. Tips for a uh, senior, 3 and 22 at 160 pounds. Lawn is a junior for the Abilene Cowboys. Tyson Tips sword, and we are back underway. Shot in by Tyson, but it's countered and into a cradle. It goes for Lawn. 
But now he's got the takedown, and he nearly takes him to his back. Now he gives up the cradle. Trying to step across. Now he's got the head in great position. And now has fifth sword to his swarm. Oh, now there's back points being given up. 30 seconds into this match with the Tiger Senior. He is down. He'll be down 5 nothing Right now he's fighting to not get pinned. Lawn has him to his back. Reaching out his his ship sword. Official got smacked with a kick inadvertently by Lawn, who was, he was trying to get a look at the shoulders. Uh, still looking in there tight. The official scooting all the way around. There's a minute 12 still to go. So obviously Tyson's got a long way to fight to stay out of this thing, but he does have his hips up now, and he will avoid the pin. He will trail five to nothing. He has to work really hard to get out of that. No doubt. Of course, a lot of energy expended to get out of that. He gives up some tilt points. And now we'll trail 8-0. 48 to work in this first period. Tyson fifth sword for the Tigers against Dakota Lawn of Abilene. Senior for the Tigers. Got the takedown against him, and then twice he's given up near fall points. Trailed 8-0, first period. 30 seconds to work. Dakota Lawn slips the half in now. Steps outside and steps across, and now he's got six sword to his back, and that will be a hit. Tyson six sword lead, uh, falls, loses by a fall here at 160 pounds. Tigers are open at 170. Let's get a 30 second timeout. We're back right after this. Take action now for a successful crop next year. At Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed, we're ready to help you plan for next season to be conservation and fertilizer needs. For your plan, we'll utilize soil testing and variable seeding rates to come up with site-specific fertilizer and seed systems. Now is a good time to establish your fertilizer and chemical program for productive crops in 2018. Gabriel and Henry Seed we offer customized solutions for crop crops. 182 pounds, good to set to go. Quentin Schultz with the Tigers, sophomore, 6 and 19, and he is, uh, we've got a Stop of action before they get going. I don't think the clock was high. There you go. Official is buzzing to make sure they get that stop. Now they're back underway. Uh, Schultz with a stop on Trey Horner. is number one ranked in 4A at 182. And he had a shot at a takedown right near the edge. And Schultz able to get outside the circle. And back to center they come. Slinton Schultz at 182 here. And sophomore for the Tigers. Horner, number one ranked in 4A, as mentioned. Tigers trailing the duel now, 48-9. to nine. Shot in. Blocked off by Schultz. Now underhooks in for Horner. And he rolls Schultz across to his back. And now has him down with near fall. And Schultz fighting to stay away from the pin. Horner reestablishes. Now steps across a little further. Schultz fighting. And there's an early pin for Trey Horner. Number one ranked in four. And that's a tough pass deck to talk with your take on. Yeah, Trey was the state, state champion last year. The Abilene Cowboy, uh, that name we've heard for a long time on the football field and right. here on the rest of the team. The Tigers now number two ranked in the state. Gavin Ware, the beast, a senior, 25-1. and one. He had a huge win at Baldwin against the yes, third ranked wrestler in the state. Yes. He won it four to three in the finals, right? Yes. He, he beat the kids from time to time. Yes, great stuff. His opponent tonight, Calder McGivney, senior for the Tigers. Gavin Ware goes in, gets an ankle pick, quick takedown. Gavin leads here against the senior for the Cowboys. And now starts him to work on top. Ware, number two ranked in the state. Now tilts McGivney over. He will not get any back points there. He leads 2 nothing. Gavin Ware for the Tigers, 25-1. and one. Riding heavy right now, trying to flatten him out. Now he does. Looking to break the arms down. Again, he continues to try to not give it up. Now he, he gets the him given in. Yeah, there's the hammer lock. And, and Gavin Ware's in great position. Now he rolls him to his back. Gavin... Looking for a first period pin. He's got him on his back. McGivney, though, bridges up and scoops toward the edge. Gavin now back in and turns and faces him while having his back down. The official looking, and there's the pin. A stick for Gavin Ware, the beast. 26 and 1 now in the year at 195 pounds. And uh, 
He has just gotten better and better and better every year, hasn't he? He is really looking good this year. It's one thing to, you know, have success early on, which he did. But uh, he came in with a game plan this year. He knew the way he was going to be out before the year began, and uh, he has just continued to impress. I, I coached him a couple matches this summer, uh, and um, I tried to work with him on getting that second takedown. He's, he's so good at his fireman, right? But he needs the second takedown to go into the deep into the state tournament. When they're looking for the fireman, something else to go to. That's right. right. Yeah. That's a great point. Underway now for the Tigers. This will be the final match. The Tigers are open at the heavyweight, but they have Keegan McDonald, McDonald going at 220 pounds. He had his first varsity wins in Baldwin last week. And Coach Begor said very excited to see that happen. He's down 2 nothing. His opponent is Dawson Wood now, a junior. Keegan is a freshman, came to the Tiger wrestling program later in the season, about midway point or at the Christmas break, basically. And it's been a great addition to being that 220-pound weight class. His older brother, Logan, uh, a sophomore wrestling at the heavyweight. 4 nothing. McDonald trailing here against Wood now for the Abilene Cowboys a junior. And he has got the legs locked in tight on McDonald right now. Both, both legs are in, yeah. And now working up top, he steps out to the outside. He's got the half in on Keegan. And now steps across. McDonald trying to not turn to his back, but he's in uh, pretty bad shape right now. Down 4 nothing. Now bridges up, but back to the back by Wood now. And there is a pin for Abilene. So it's going to be a loss by fall for Keegan McDonald. Tigers are open at the heavyweight, as mentioned. Logan McDonald out with an injury, so he will be unable to go tonight. Adam Henley will step out and get to raise his hand for the Cowboys. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back and take a look at the lineup tonight. The results of the Tigers. They do lose the duel 60-15 to here against Abilene. Stay with us. For Tiger Wrestling from Abilene, our post game coming up in just a minute. The cooperative spirit drives Central Valley and Energy League Payne Field and to help everyone work together. I like how cooperative it's staring and balance everybody else in the community to work towards the same goal. Elevator Superintendent Tony Krause sees it and everyone involved in the cooperative. I see people that are genuine, honest, uplifting, caring. Location managers like Doug Eisenmaker lead their team to the cooperative spirit. It's not what I can do, it's not what you can do, but it's what we can do together. You and Central Valley and together. Don't have time to stop by a bank to open an account? No problem. With United Bank and Trust, we make it easy by bringing our bank to you. Whether you're at home, at work, or anywhere you have access to a computer, simply go to ubankonline.com and click on the open an account icon. Save time by opening an account online with United Bank and Trust. It's banking for your way of life. Member FDIC. When you grow corn or soybeans for a living, you're always looking for the latest advances to help your fields be more profitable. That's why it's time to turn to Channel. When you plant elite Channel Seed products, you also get the services of your very own Channel Seedsman. You see, your Seedman works with you year-round to make the most of your operation. For customized service, expert advice, and elite seed products, contact Colton with Frontier Ag Supply, 785-630-0596. Here at TSI Kansas, we'd like to say thank you to our customers for allowing TSI Kansas to serve you. And a special thanks to our drivers for their hard work and dedication, and to their families for their support and understanding. We know it takes all of these people to make us a great company. If you'd like to work for a company that cares about you and your family, call 632-5183. Ask for me, Heather. Check out our Facebook page or learn more about us at TSIKansas.com. And once again, we bring you back to Abilene, where the Clay Center Tigers are going to fall tonight, 66-15. to 15. First off, Abilene, very, very good. The Tigers banged up without one of their state-ranked wrestlers. So, cards pretty much stacked against the Tigers coming into this duel. Yeah, it was a uh, tough night for the Tigers. At 106, uh, right off us, the uh, state ranked at number three at 106 was out tonight. Brighton Shoemaker steps in. He lost by a ball to Gus Haug. Bolton Barner, a freshman for the Tigers, took on the second-ranked wrestler in the state, Will Stroda, in 4A, and he lost by a ball. Then Parker Solskjaer came back at 120 and beat a senior, Kevin Ponce. And for Parker, that's 19-6 now in the season. And uh, this matches the Tigers won tonight 
The guys were in complete control of their matches, didn't you say? Oh, yes, very much so. Yeah, Parker and uh, then Sam Osborne won 6 nothing over Nick Brooks at 152, and then Gavin Ware, the win by a ball at 195 uh, in his matchup against Paul and McKibney. That came in the first period. It's been Ware goes to 26 and 1, Osborne 24 and 1, and Goldsmith 19 and 6. I mentioned Shoemaker, Barner lost by a ball. The Tigers were open at 126 and 132. Reed Nitter last 3 to 2 against number 6 for Trevor Castillo, and then things just went the other direction. If you said that Castillo scored in flurries, yes, he did. He let loose the flurry there. And uh, then when they're going to win it by a ball over three dinner at 138. Ethan Alquist lost by a ball to Austin Woodfell, a junior in 145. Tyson Tipsword uh, lost to Dakota Long by a ball. The Tigers opened at 170. Quentin Schultz lost by a ball to number one ranked Trey Horner at 182. Deacon McDonald uh, lost by a ball to Dawson Woodfell, a junior at 220. And then the Tigers were open at the heavyweight. So, again, the Tigers get wins by ball for Gavin Ware, the senior. He is 26-1 now, second ranked in at 4A at 195. And then they also get wins by a ball for Parker Folstrup, the uh, freshman, at 120. And Cam Osborne, the Tiger winner, in a 6 nothing decision at 152 pounds. The Tigers have lost 66-15 in this duel. Tigers go to Rose Hill. I know you'll be making the road trip on sure, right? Yes, I will be. Okay. But um, I'm going to have to come back to Clay Center because of our Great Greater Classic on Saturday. Talk about the the day in Clay Center and, and the numbers that are coming in just in wrestlers a lot. Um, Saturday we are expecting 407 wrestlers. Wow. And um, our tournament is called the Great Greater Classic in, in memory of Greg Greater, who started the Clay County Wrestling Club. Right. Uh, we heard... Stand up for the champions, played in the three match ceremonies, which is almost played everywhere, it seems like, and it always makes you think of, of Coach, doesn't it? That he sat in that seat you're sitting in for a long time with me uh, after he had given up coaching, and he never stopped coaching for that matter. But I know it's a great honor for the family to have that tournament continue, and, and uh, 407 wrestlers expected. That's a lot of people coming to the community. As far as people wanting to come watch, or how can they, and what, what can they expect? Um, the, the tournament will be at the Tiger Gym at the Clay Center High School, and wrestling starts at 9 o'clock. Very good. Well, if you can get out and help support the wrestling club, it's a great opportunity. We talked about seeing a lot of and the ages. For, for people who don't follow, maybe, or listen, listening in for the Tigers tonight, what age groups will there be there? There, there will be wrestlers from 5 years old up until 14. Very good. And some high-quality wrestling and some, a lot of fun, too. A lot, of fun, going, yeah. a lot of chaos. <laughs> Noise and chaos. You'll, yeah. you'll be ready for a quiet Sunday, but uh, thanks for, for what you do with the Clay County Wrestling Club, Eric. And thanks for stepping in tonight. Glad to have you alongside. Thank you for asking. Me. Absolutely. Eric Alquist with us tonight. The Tigers here at Abilene back at it this weekend at Rose Hill. We'll have the Tigers back on the air a week from tonight, senior night against the Concordia Panthers in the Den. And then, of course, two weeks from tomorrow opens up regional competition right back here in Abilene, and uh, during the postseason, we bring you all the Tiger matches live on TCOY. For Eric Alquist and our studio engineer, Bernie Pancella, this is Rocky Downing telling you to enjoy the rest of your sports Thursday.